Good morning chaps, welcome along to the vlog. Today is the one that you've all been waiting for. Today's the day when we do the big reveal on the vacant gesture recipe. People have been waiting for this for a long time. Now, if you go back throughout the history of uh, my uploads, you will find the recipe in there if you're smart enough to piece it all together. So I don't feel like I'm giving away something that's not already out there. Um, and I'm all about sharing things in there in the great domain of the interwebs. So let's get started with today's brew. We're running a little bit behind already. So we had to do some finishing off from yesterday and I've had to print all this paperwork off. So uh, I can give you the correct information to make this beer uh, almost verbatim. So the bacon gesture uh, is a blonde ale. That's the category style 6B that you're gonna go for if you use something like uh, Beersmith software. The batches that I brew at are 500 litres on the, on the nose, but what I'll do is give you the quantities that I'm using for a 500 litre batch, and I will give you, give you the percentages and the IBUs as well as we go down. So you can punch this into Beersmith regardless of your batch size. So I think we'll start with letting you have a look at the recipe sheet. There she is in all her glory. So a lot of people who've actually been to the brewery will have seen these pinned to the fermenters. So we start by burtonizing our water. We use Murphy's Pale Ale and Bitters uh, recommendations. Uh, for us to do that, we have to add 389 grams of DWB to the mash and 260 milliliters of AMS. That seems to work for us. I can't say I'm an expert on the water chemistry front, but uh, it gives us the profile that we want at the other end, and we hit our pH targets. And then for the malts, we've got uh, 65 kilograms of pale malt. We use extra pale in the brewery, uh, and that works out to 88.7% of the grist. Then we've got 6.61 kilograms of wheat malt, we use the German wheat malt, uh, which you get from uh, Baird's. I think it's Baird's. Yes, I think so. But Muntins do one that's very similar. Uh, and I think actually Baird's buy in from Schultz or something like that malts. Uh, anyway, that works out at 9% of the grist bill. And then we've got uh, Cara 10, or Cara Pills, or Cara Light, or depending on who you use as a grain supplier. Anyway, you're looking for something, a caramel with an EBC of 19-ish and a lover bond of 10. Uh, and that works out at 2.2% in the grist. Uh, we go for, let me just find it on here. Uh, there's a total grain weight of uh, 73 kilos there. And we add, uh, I think it's 250 litres of water, so you can kind of extrapolate the uh, the grain to water ratio there. Yeah, that's a lot. Now it doesn't seem to be on here, uh, but yeah, we have, well it says here we're mashing at 191 litres. I tend to go a little bit on the thin side if necessary, uh, just to make sure we hit the temps. So we're going to go and weigh these grains out and we'll get them in the mash tun. Uh, we're shooting for a mash temperature of 65 degrees C and we're going to strike in at 80 for this particular system. You'll have your own way of doing things on your kit. And then once we've got the mash in, we'll come back and we'll talk about the other additions and what we're going to do uh, in terms of bitterness. So we've got the HLT recirculating at a nice toasty 80 degrees C. So we're about to set the timer and start filling the HLT from the bottom with that hose here. And then we'll pop the grain in at the same time and let the mash tun underlet. Drop the bag down to the bottom so it doesn't make any dust. And we'll just let all of the grain fall out slowly. OK, 
keeping dust to a minimum. And then we've got the wheat malt and the cara in this bucket. So we'll tip that in as well. And then finally we've got the DWB. Uh, there is also the AMS, but I generally wait until we've got some liquid on the surface so that the AMS doesn't directly get absorbed into any grain and it's more dispersed. Right, there we go, you've seen this a thousand times. We just had to move a load of grain around. So uh, I put a little bit more water in here than I wanted to, but that's not a problem. If anything, it'll just be a little too hot originally. So this is the AMS that we're adding. That's gonna help control the pH. So we'll just move this grain around a little bit. So I've stopped filling now. Yeah, this is a relatively wet mash, but it's nothing to be too worried about. 64.6. Thought that would have been high. Well, imagine what may have happened here because we had the HLT and everything out over the weekend painting. The probe might not be sat correctly. Might get an erroneous reading in there. We'll see. We'll give it a mix first, and we'll come back to the show. So it's much easier to drop the temperature on a mash than it is to bring it up. So I'd rather be high when I mash in, and then add a little bit of cold water than the other way around. It's almost impossible unless you've got like a Herms coil to bring the temperature of the mash back up. And we don't have a herbs coil. Yeah, it looks like we're about half a degree down, which is uh, surprising actually, considering that we struck in at 80. So I think something erroneous is going on somewhere. We'll have to get to the bottom of it, but that's not a problem. So I'm going to set the timer and then we're going to mash for 60 minutes. I like to get the temperature where I want it in the first 15 minutes of the mash because that's when most of the conversion happens and then we just let it sit for the remaining 30 and then for the last 15 minutes we'll do a vol off and recirculate it. So after a bit more mixing we managed to hit the 65 mark. So now what I'm doing is filling up the HLT again so we've got enough water to sparge the mash. The HLT is on so it's going to hopefully now heat up to the correct temperature that we want. At the moment she's reading 72 degrees, so it doesn't have a lot to heat up to. And then we're gonna give these two new pH meters a run for the money. So I've just taken a sample of the work, cooled it down sufficiently that it's not gonna damage the probe. We're gonna drop, in fact I might see if I can get a smaller glass for us to set the reading in, because she'll have to be looking through the uh, a glass of the doodly do. So we've got the probe in there and I don't know if you can make that out. There we go, 5.3 on this one now. It was 5.2 a second ago. So they're accurate to within 0 0.1, so that could be 5.1 or 5.4 effectively. 5.2 or 5.4 should I say. So I'm kind of happy with that. So let's check, check the other one out, see what, see what reading we've got with this one. Give it a quick rinse on the end. I'll stick it into the liquid. This is the first time I'm seeing this result as well. So we've got five, 
point two one. Five point two. Five point two. I'll take that all freaking day long. So now what I have to do before I am ready to transfer the transfer transfer the sweet work from the for the vacant from the mash tun into the boil kettle. I need to sanitise all that plate heat exchanger. So we've put some paracetic acid in there with a little bit of water. A dilution rate of about uh, half a percent, I think it is, or between half a percent and one and a half percent. Then we're going to uh, open the valve. Not that one. Uh, that one. That one to drain it. Uh, open this valve. Now I think we're geared up actually, just make sure I've got the right ones in the right place. Oil pumps on. Right on. Yeah. So the pump's on like that. So first things first, we're going to recirculate the paracetic acid through the pipe work and back into the boil kettle. There we go, that's working. We can close that off. Now we're going to do the same thing, but it's going to go via the plate exchanger. Close that, open that. There we go. So now all the plate exchanger is filled up with paracetic and it's recirculating round through the plate heat exchanger back into the kettle. And this is also the hose that we're going to use to transfer the beer when it's finished. So what I like to do is just let a little bit of the uh, acid come through onto the floor just to push out anything that we might not necessarily have wanted in there. There we go. Just in case anything's crawled into the end of the hose, it shouldn't be done. And we'll connect it to the recirculation port. We'll insert the safety clips so the pipe doesn't come flying off when we least expect it. So even though I've been doing this for years, I still get confused which lever does what sometimes. So now we're going to open that up. We're going to open this up. And now we've got the acid basically coming out the bottom of the tank, going through the plate heat exchanger, through the transfer hose, and back into the tank. So we've created a sanitation loop. I'm going to let that run for 15 minutes, make sure everything's been soaked in this acid and clean and then we drain the whole system down we don't rinse we just drain down and then that should all be done in time for the transfer when we start to move all the liquid out of the mash tun and into the boil kettle ready for a boil and then we can start adding some hops which brings me neatly on to the recipe again so folks this is where the vacant gesture gets all of its character. Just check the audio there. Had a little panic on the uh, volume there for a second. So yeah, let's talk about hop additions for the vacant gesture. Uh, I like to use Challenger and Mosaic. I use the Challenger for the bittering edition because I don't want to spend £35 a kilo on a bittering edition hop. Uh, so what we do is we aim for a target IBU of 26 for the whole batch. So for this particular beer, that means we're working backwards. We want to put 500 grams of mosaic into the whirlpool at 80 degrees. Now on this kit, that's going to give me 6.2 IBUs. So the remaining 20 IBUs is what we uh, use to calculate how much Challenger we're going to put in there. So today's brew, we've got 450 grams of Challenger hops going in at 60 minutes for a 60 minute boil. And then at 10 minutes remaining, we have uh, five protoflock tablets going in there. And then at the end of the 60 minutes, we turn the heat off and we'll 
chill through the plate chiller and recirculate back in to create a whirlpool to 80 degrees. And when we get to 80 degrees, that whirlpool should be gunning around. That's where we add our whirlpool addition hops, which is 500 grams of mosaic. Then we'll leave that for half an hour. We'll set the timer and we'll leave it to just sit for half an hour. That whirlpool will come to a stop. Everything will just come to a pile in the middle of the boil kettle. And then after that, we will uh, use the side takeoff port to chill down to uh, 20 degrees, 18 to 20 degrees, and dump the whole lot into the fermenter uh, where we're going to add Safale 05. Uh, I normally put around 250 grams to 300 grams per 500 litres. You can work out your own hopping regime, uh, yeast regime if you like. Then we'll talk about the dry hops when we've got the beer in the tank, I think. Right, that's the alarm ringing because the mash has had 45 minutes so now we're going to set it to recirculate to do the fall off and uh, at the end of that we'll also take an iodine reading to make sure that uh, all the starch conversion is complete and once we've got the research set up we'll enter the acid out the boil kettle and we're ready then to transfer once the fall off is complete how easy it is so what I generally tend to do is pull the sparge arms off while I do the ball off so no grain particles block the little spray holes on there uh, if you just want to go and flick the mash pump on for me Jack which is the orange cable you'll see that out of the bottom here just in there look we'll start to get a little bit of uh, the beer coming through and then generally what I'll do is just slow it down a little bit just so we're not compressing that grain bed with too much suction. So while I leave that running, I can now start work on emptying this pipe work down here. So we, uh, we're gonna basically dump the acid. You'll see it come out of the drain down there. Make sure all the pipes are open. Yeah, there we go. Open, open, open. And then we just... Dump the acid. There we go. Dump the acid out of the plate chiller as well. And that... is that. So all we have to do now is close the valves shut off the plate exchanger both sides so that when we fill the the beer tank up the boil kettle up we're not filling the uh, heat ex full of unboiled wort which are basically you know undo all the sanitation work that we've done and then once we've got the wort boiling uh, we'll recirculate it a couple of times through there to push any residual acid out and uh, 
then it should all be everything that it's, the work's come into contact with should be sanitised. Shut the transfer hose as well, but we will recirculate through that at some point. Right, we've just about got three minutes before the alarm goes off, so I've got a bright white plate here. Let's take a little sample of the uh, of the sweet work that's coming out of the mash tun. We'll bring it over here to the sink, and we'll pop open the iodine. Last time I did this on camera about five years ago, ended up with it all down my shirt. So let me see if we can just put a drop in there. You can just about see that. I can anyway, but you can't very well. So let's get that camera angled down on there and zoomed right in. So what we're looking for is any black whatsoever in the iodine. And as you can see, as we spread it out, if I frame it, that it's all staying goldeny brown. So that means we've got full conversion. That means there's no starch molecules left in the liquid. And we are ready to transfer across to the boil kettle. Shazam. <laughs> So it's at this stage, I'll reinsert the, the rotating sparge arms. It's basically just a push fit 15mm uh, T with the metal retaining clips removed and the O-ring itself is enough to secure it in place. And uh, on the upright section, I've removed the O-ring and the metal retaining clip is the only thing that's stopping the whole shebang from falling off of that, uh, that little downspout there, which comes, of course, from the top section. And there she goes. She's now doing her job. We're just gonna wait for the alarm, which is about 40 seconds away. And then we'll change that pipe there and put it up onto the boil kettle. So we'll fill the boil kettle. There we go. And then we'll put the hot water from the HLT, the hot liquor tank, on here to replace the liquid that's been removed uh, during the sparge. So normally I've got this done the day before. We need to, I'm talking to camera board. <laughs> we need to uh, sanitize these tanks, but also get rid of the trube that's in the bottom of them. So uh, there we go, just open the, open the valve and you can see that all of the yeast and whatever else is in there, the spent hops, all that lovely stuff is about to come flying out the bottom of that tank. or if it's not going to fly out, it'll just ooze out like this. Dear, it takes your breath away with your head in that tank. So that's most of the crap out the bottom. In the top, I'll just throw you over the top to have a look in a second. All we've got in there now is a Krausen ring which we're gonna scrape off. Quick rinse, and then we're gonna fill it with caustic. Recirculate it in the tank. Rinse the caustic out. Add the acid, recirculate that in the tank. And then put the beer in. This is what's left, by the way. Oh. 
So a part of the sanitation procedure with all the fermenters in the brewery is to break them down into their component parts. So we've taken all of the fittings off, all of the O-rings have come out, the lids come off, and everything has been over to the sink and cleaned thoroughly before being reassembled. So that's the takeoff port. And then this bottom one is our blow valve for our, our main drain valve. So the valve at the bottom of the tank is only ever used for emptying the tank and for cleaning loops. We never take product out the bottom of the tank. We will in the future though be taking harvesting yeast from the bottom of the tank, so that's something we don't do yet, but we will be doing pretty soon. Can you see me down here? So that's ready to fill up now with caustic and set up a CIP loop. Right now's the time to weigh out our 60 minute edition of Challenger and because we're doing the same beer tomorrow as well generally what I'm going to do is weigh two batches out so we're going in for 450 grams oh, it smells lovely I must admit even Challenger, massively underrated hop in my opinion, this one. You can see I've got everything on the side here still from yesterday, playing around with those pH meters and everything else. Now all I need to do is uh, seal the bag back up. Exactly the same thing with the Mosaic. So this is the Whirlpool edition. Oh, it smells fantastic. 500 grams. And then a couple of days when fermentation ceased, we'll weigh out two different charges of dry hop, 750 grams for each. One of them goes in on day five, the other one goes in two days after that for a total of five days for all of them so the five day addition goes in on day five after fermentation after pitching and then that stays in for five days and then on day eight the other 750 grams goes in for two days and then we take off into packaging keg bottle cask whatever you like hi folks I'm just interjecting uh, whilst I edit the vlog I've got home and I've realized that even though the brew day was pretty good and ran really smoothly I did actually neglect to talk about any numbers in respect of ABV and specific gravity so I'll just fill you in here our target ABV for the vacant gesture is 3.8% so generally what I aim for is a pre-boil gravity of around 1035. Yours may change depending on, of course, your system. And then uh, a specific gravity, an original gravity to start fermentation is gen generally uh, at around 1036, 1037. And that's pretty low, you might think, for a 3.8% beer, but we're shooting for a final gravity of around uh, 10.06 to 10.07. On the sacrometers or hydrometers that we use for the brewery, which are HMRC compliant, we actually have another decimal place. So uh, today's batch, for instance, uh, that went into the fermenter at 10.36.2, so that's 1.0362. Uh, but anywhere in that ballpark's good. Basically, I just advise you to try and aim for a final gravity between 10.06 and 10.07, and then work out your ABV at the other end where you want to start, because you don't really want a really sweet beer 
because it's going to throw off the balance and you're not going to achieve the same kind of bite from the mosaic hops as what we get in the pub. It's very important that the balance is right in this particular beer. So a pre-boil of around 10 to 35, a final gravity or starting gravity should I say, an original gravity of 1036 and a final gravity of 1006. That's right. Back to the vlog. You watched me do all that, didn't you? So now we've actually achieved a boil. I very cautiously open, open the, uh, the kettle. And you'll be able to see. Sometimes it jumps out at this point. There we go. So I've got the hops here. The Challenger and the Mosaic. If you ever get confused which is which, stick your nose in the top of them because there's no doubt in that mosaic hop for sure and then these are the slightly more earthy challenger we're going to start the 60 minute boil now so we're going to add the 450 grams or this would be the addition that would balance your IBUs to 26 IBUs after you've taken into account what contribution the whirlpool is going to give you once you know that, you know how much uh, challenger to add. So let's get that lid shut before something happens that we don't want it to. And uh, we'll go and set the timer now for 50 minutes. And after that we will be adding our protoflock tablets. Okay, so the alarm's sounded. We are five minutes away from the end of the boil. Five minutes ago, I put five protoflock tablets into the boil kettle, and then I've also opened up the plate chiller to the uh, to the wort. So we've recirculated it through. Uh, that's had the first couple of minutes of hot work flowing through it. It's released any air pockets that were in the plate chiller, and it's sanitized and recirculated everything through all the pipe work now so all the pipe works had boiling work through it to help with the sanitation process um, making sure of course not to build any pressure loops up so what I've done is turn the pump off now everything's open it's all sat there under equilibrium and then when we've finished the boil which is literally just five minutes away we're going to start cooling whilst we whirlpool until we hit that magical 80 degrees C and once we get there we're going to throw the rest of the mosaic, in fact the first edition of mosaic, into the boil kettle and we're going to turn everything off and let that sit for 30 minutes and then we'll recommence with the cooling and take the beer directly to the fermenter. In the background you can hear a pump going, that is the acid being recirculated around the fermenter to make sure that that's all sanitary. Once uh, we do the whirlpool, once we've got the whirlpool stopped and we're doing the 30 minute hop stand, that's when I'll go across to the fermenter and I'll also drain out all of the acid that's in there and we'll save that to back flush the plate chiller and everything else we're ready for tomorrow's brew. It's as simple as that. Right, we're now chilling the beer down to 80 degrees, as you can see and hear. So uh, we're going to now plug this wastewater line back into the HLT to try and rescue some of the energy. Just like that. So now we're filling the HLT back up for tomorrow and we're cooling the beer down to 80C. That noise from the pump subsides once we get to around 90 degrees. It's only cavitation, I think, basically steam creating bubbles within the pump housing. Makes a bit of a racket to begin with, soon calms down. In fact, I just turned the camera off and immediately the noise is beginning to die down now and we're at 98 and a half degrees. 
so it's not something to be worried about. Right, I just shot around the other side to turn the pump off. You probably can't see because of the steam, but that is just tonking around in a circle. I'll be able to see when I put that in. It is a whirlpool for sure. So now we're at 80 degrees. We're going to pop this mosaic addition in. Not all of them want to come out. And uh, then we're just going to let everything sit for 30 minutes and absorb all those lovely aromas. And that's it, we're fully transferring now. We're going from 77 degrees in the boil kettle to 18 degrees in the fermenter. The transfer will probably take us around 35 minutes and it's half past three, so uh, when things go well on a brew day, we can pretty much get everything done and dusted, even from a late start, like today we didn't mash in till 10, 10.30. So it just shows you what's possible, and uh, the vacant isn't a very difficult beer to brew, um, but it is rather good when it's brewed. So uh, I've just got to sprinkle the yeast in there, folks, but I'm pretty sure that everybody out there knows how to put a bit of yeast into a batch of beer. So we'll leave that one with you. Uh, and we'll come back tomorrow. We're going to do the whole thing again, but I'm not going to talk you through the recipe this time. We'll probably take a different tack on tomorrow's vlog. See you then.